privilege. Yeah, I am privileged and fortunate. Why? Because in this hobby, I was able to meet and make connections and friendships with truly remarkable people. I just want to do a couple shout outs to some of these uh, friendships that I've made over the years. I'll do three. So first off, Dom, when it comes to solid state and quality watts, well, <laughs> shit, man, you're a beast. You're a beast. Now, this is probably one of the best Class A amp I've ever heard. You are an execution powerhouse. In fact, pretty soon, man, let's make a little video series of some of your projects and what you, you're working on. Because, man, I think you have a lot to offer to the hi-fi world. Second, shout out, Stan, you incredible genius. I'll never be in your league. Um, what you are doing with your SK project, the SK amplifier, um, is spectacular. I can't thank you enough for involving me um, and just having the chance to just hear uh, the iterations of your amplifier and what it is that you're trying to do. I, I'm very thankful. Um, I'm learning so much. Um, plus, I get to experience something in hi-fi that, from a hearing perspective, is similar to what a VR headset has done for my eyes. It's fooling my brain. It's a lot of fun. And the third shout out, which I think is the meat of my video for today, is Thomas. So Thomas and I have different tastes when it comes to audio, but we still manage to understand one another when it comes to um, sharing on our impressions of what we hear and, and how things seem to be presented to us. Um, and although I haven't known Thomas for that long, comparatively speaking to other friendships and connections um, that I have, um, We've known each other for, for several years now. Um, I learned a lot from Thomas. Um, I'd say um, it, it's a relationship that I, that, that I value very much. Um, and uh, I'm going to take this video to actually thank you um, for your help on everything. Um, uh, the impact that you have in the audiophile community here, around here, is, is nothing short of significant. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one to say this. Um, let's talk about the Galeon TS120 for a couple minutes. I'm going to be making another video on the, on the, the, the Galleon and, and what I think of it and uh, go into details a little bit more. Um, but I recently had the TS120 for, uh, for a couple weeks and the first thing I did was I took it to my buddy Carl's place. Now, Carl's been struggling with this hobby for a while because he loves to watch movies as much as he does listening to music. So, and he doesn't have the uh, space or I guess ambition to want to build two separate systems. Let's face it, it's not easy to do and it takes room and it costs a lot of money. Um, so he has a home theater, um, but he's been playing around with power amps to drive his uh, main speakers, which are uh, monitor audio, silver eights, I think they are. Uh, to try to maximize the uh, musical experience when he listens to music without having to, you know, break the home theater setup that he has going. I think right now he uses, so right now he uses an Emotiva amp uh, for his, um, for his monitor audio speakers. And he's not satisfied and he wasn't satisfied with the other amp that he had before, which I forget what it was. So anyways, when I showed up at his place with the Galeon uh, TS120, we uh, hooked it up instead of the Emotiva amp uh, using the Galeon's pre-in, aka the HT bypass. Turned it on, let the tubes warm up. Uh, then we uh, hit play. Holy shit. Uh, Carl's not someone who likes to listen to music with subwoofers, but when he uses his Emotiva amp or the other amp solid state amplifiers that he used before, um, he had to have them on because the speakers simply didn't give the level of energy and that room compression feel where the instruments start to uh, glow and start to be felt and not just heard. Uh, he, he wasn't getting that. When the Galeon started pushing his monitor audios, the glow showed up. The feeling showed up. We disconnected his subwoofers because the impact coming out of those, what, six and a half inch? bass drivers that are in there all of a sudden 
was on a different league. It was a different world. His voice, his reply was, his voice, his reply was, what the f <laughs> Yeah. He was like, what just happened? He's like, it's like, I have new speakers. It's like, it's like, is there a switch behind these speakers that I didn't know about that you turned on? He's like, how is the amp alone doing all this? It's amazing. Uh, and it really was. Um, I was, I was surprised. I wasn't expecting it to be uh, that cool, that energetic, that dynamic, that powerful. The, the punch came right through your chest. Now the mid range had feel, like I said before, you, you could feel it now. It wasn't just about being heard. Um, and his soundstage boop, showed up. Ah, there wasn't really much of a soundstage before to tell you the truth. Honestly, there was a center image, but there wasn't much of a soundstage. There was very much a left, a right speaker. And yeah, you had a little bit of a center image on some things. Now with the Galeon, oh man, there was space, there was room. Uh, it went farther back behind his wall. Anyway, I'm not going to go too far into this detail because uh, there's a good chance that Thomas is actually going to go uh, to Thomas's house um, with the both versions of the Galeon and make a little video. We'll see. Uh, but anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to take away from that. So then I brought the Galeon back to my place. As some of you saw, I put a little preview of Melody Gardo. Um, it sounded really good. It sounded very good. Um, it didn't give me the same magic that I felt at Carl's place. Um, but I think me and Thomas know why, uh, and it's normal. Because in my ugly open baffles right now, I'm using very, very high sensitivity full range drivers. And in my experiences, these high sensitivity full range drivers really are meant to work with low wattage amps to sound their best. I mean, by low wattage, personally, what I feel is under, under 30 watts. Um, whenever I've used other amplifiers in the past that had a little bit more torque, so to speak, or more wattage, um, I had a little bit of the effect that I heard when I plugged in the Galeon with these, especially in class AB. Um, it almost feels like there's too much current and the drivers seem to get a little overwhelmed. Um, trying to reproduce the, 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 the full wavelength from the, from the highs down to the lows. Um, one of the side effects of that is you actually start to lose a little bit of bass um, and you start to feel like the highs are a little bit too in your face. Um, and this, this, this didn't happen with, uh, with the Galen. It happened also with, uh, happened with the Peachtree combo, happened with uh, Moon Solid State amplifiers. It even happened with uh, one of my buddy Dom's um amazing class a b diy amplifiers but uh they were they, they they pumped out 300 watts it's it's it wasn't made for this but nonetheless it still sounded good it sounded very good it just wasn't it it, it wasn't performing the same way that say my my 20 watt uh class a was was doing or how the deckware amplifier sounded with these uh speakers so uh this is just Pure example of synergy uh, between amplification and speakers. Um, but like Thomas told me, he doesn't, he, he really doesn't think that his amplifier is for an open baffle market or a, not an open baffle market. Let's not say that. That's not true. Uh, he, it, it's n probably not meant for an ultra high sensitivity full range driver um, setup. Uh, because when I sat down in my chair with the Galeon being here, Man, all I was doing was dreaming about the sound I heard in my friend's car. It was very unexpected, very surprising. Uh, the wow factor was there. Uh, because I see what Thomas is doing. And um, let me tell you, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of long hours. Um, just in testing the capacitor combinations that he's been doing in the last recent months. Um, is a gargantuan amount of work. I don't think you guys realize, like you you are talking about, um, it's not just putting in new capacitors, it's different combinations of capacitors he's playing with through uh, different ratings, different brands, uh, different types. That's That takes a while to do. Like you gotta, you gotta freaking solder them, in, solder them in, you gotta break them in, you gotta sit there and listen and listen and listen and listen and listen. It's, it's time consuming. It's very time consuming. Um, and it's difficult because you have to do it at a pace that 
you don't end up with tunnel vision to a point where you no longer can tell the difference between each component. So you have to pace yourself, you have to be writing notes, you have to be very alert as to how things sound. And not to mention like the back and forth that he has to do between all the, the, the part manufacturers, the risk that he's taking, because he's going all in on this. Um, and, and one could definitely argue that for a project like this to succeed at best, as best as it can, one has to go all in. So why, so part of why I really want this is I think uh, it's because of Thomas. And I know that he's working on something that is going to end up being special. It really is. Look, most of you probably realize right by watching his videos, uh, Thomas is a very humble, very level-headed person. Um, but this is not an act. In person, he's the same way. Uh, he's meticulous, he's analytical, he's cautious of his findings and his statements. Um, Thomas doesn't jump to conclusions after one finding or after one experience. Um, he really doesn't. He's, uh, uh, he's thorough in, in his work and, and, and his approach. But I think most importantly, he's fair with his assessment. He's fair with himself and he's fair with others. Um, he is dedicated to making this project work and to making it sound as best as he thinks it should sound. So I asked him a question the other day. Um, you know, to go back and forth a lot between the different caps and he's sharing the experiences of how, you know, one, one does this or the other one does that, or this combination made this sound good, but this not sound so good. Um, so he's, uh, he's in a big, <laughs> he's in a big, big experiment right now. So I asked him, I said, are you trying to voice the amp to make it sound like something you think will sell more? Or are you trying to voice this amp to make it sound like you want it to sound? His answer was perfect. And because of that answer, that makes me want to buy one. Before I let you go, so my friend Carl, after I left his place, he ordered a Galleon. <laughs> and this is the text message he sent me.